Now, the pressure is mounting on UNRWA, the UN agency responsible for Palestinians in Gaza. UNRWA chief Philippe Lazzarini says he and his staff had no idea that Hamas had a key operating centre right under its headquarters in Gaza. Israel has already provided evidence to show at least 12 UNRWA staff members took part in the October 7 attacks, while at least 1,200 of them are affiliated with either Hamas or Palestinian Jihad. Over a dozen countries have cut funding to the organization. Well, with me in the studio, Hillel Neuer is the executive director at United Nations Watch. And uh, you've been key uh, to this campaign, Hillel. Great to, great to see you. And, and you have also provided you know, overwhelming evidence of UNRWA's activities, its links to terrorism uh, in Gaza and in the territories. Uh, so this will come as no surprise to you. No, look, we've been sending warnings to the United Nations Secretary General, to UNRWA, since August 2015. And the first time we did this, we were attacked by the spokesman for many years. His name was Chris Gunnis. He's actually been pulled back out of retirement and is acting as a surrogate. And just the other day, he attacked me again. He, I had posted on Twitter that I'm going to make an announcement about something to do with UNRWA. And he kind of had an online meltdown, and he said, journalists, don't listen to him. UN Watch is a terrible organization. They're going to be saying things dictated to them by Israel and the IDF, which is false and defamatory. And uh, this, is, this was our experience for 10 years when we tried to warn the UN that in their UNRWA schools, they had thousands, we estimated thousands of supporters of terrorism. They attacked us. That was the UN response. Well, what do you make of the response from uh, Lazzarini, the head of UNRWA, saying, you know, pleading ignorance? They had, we we they had, had no, no idea. Clue. They had no idea whatsoever. His, his tweet said that uh, UNRWA did not know what was beneath its headquarters in Gaza. So how are we supposed to know what's right below, right below our nose? You know, I mean, how, how are we supposed to know what's right under our nose? We have, we have no clue. I mean, it's absurd. We saw a very sophisticated tunnel that was built right under their headquarters with electrical cables powering the Hamas intelligence server center that were coming out of the UNRWA uh, electricity grid. So certainly people checking the electric bill would have known. Everybody knew. In fact, a number of years ago, uh, it was reported in one of the major newspapers, the UNRWA staff saw that a parking lot, it was, this was in the Wall Street Journal last week, an entire parking lot had begun to sink in the UNRWA compound and no one wanted to ask any questions. Which is quite unusual when you drive to work and your, your car park starts to sink into the ground. You think that would ring some alarm? When, when everyone knows that, that Hamas is building tunnels everywhere. So, of course, they knew. Well, of course, uh, they might not be taking it seriously, but major donors are taking it seriously. We've seen over a dozen countries cut funding to the group. Is that cut in funding uh, hindering its operations? I, I don't think it's yet hindered the operations. Uh, we welcome the fact that maybe half a billion dollars in theory was suspended, but the truth is that all of these donor countries are supporters of UNRWA and are still covering for them. They, a number of countries, it is said that the U.S. rushed money out the door before they announced the suspension. So I don't think it's actually really affected them, but UNRWA loves to say, we're dying, we're starving, we have no money. Uh, I don't think that's the case. And sadly, I think that many of the donor countries are, are keen to restart funding right away. These two inquiries that have been set up are performative, they're not serious, they're not really independent. The head of one of the inquiries is the former French foreign minister, who on January 14th tweeted a message out to Mr. Lazzarini, the head of UNRWA, saying, you're doing great work, never been needed more than ever. She's going to give an independent analysis. Three Scandinavian groups, each of them has anti-Israel material on their website. One of them from Denmark uh, has said that UNRWA, any criticism of UNRWA is an attack on UNRWA. So this is, this is fixed. It's a kangaroo court, not real inquiries. And it's just so that the donor states will say, ah, the inquiry did their work. They recommended some changes. Instead of Bill being in charge of vetting, now they put in Frank. Everything is fixed. We restart the money. That's where this is going. And we've announced an international summit on the future beyond UNRWA. Right, this is on the sidelines of the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, which covers all other refugees in the world except the Palestinians. Well, it's going to be near that. And it's also going to take place at the same time that the Human Rights Council opens its annual session. Guterres will be there, the Secretary General, along with foreign ministers from around the world. And on the sidelines of that opening will be our international summit for a future beyond UNRWA. We'll have members of parliament from around the world, humanitarian aid experts, political leaders, the authors. And we're going to start talking about how to help Palestinians and Israelis without having a terror infested uh, agency. All right. And uh, Ruth Wasserman Lander, uh, former MK, I mean, uh, the Israeli leadership is very clear. There can be no role for UNRWA 
uh, post Hamas in Gaza. There's no question about it. First of all, thank you for everything that you're doing to put the truth out there. But uh, very many factors around the globe are not only not interested in the truth, they don't want to be confused with the facts. And it's quite astounding, this upside down kind of world, because there is clear evidence. It's not even close to, to not being clear. Clear evidence that the headquarters sitting above a huge center, intelligence center of the uh, uh, Hamas, it is absolutely impossible not to know that they're there. And it's, it's, it's screaming out why those Western uh, role players are closing their eyes and refusing to see the truth. It's almost unbearable because this terror organization, if I may just put this on the table, Hamas and other religiously based terror organizations, their main goal is religiously based. It's not land-based. It's not in the Gaza Strip. It's not in it's the West Bank. Mm -hmm. It's ideological and it's worldwide. So it means it also means creating an Islamic caliphate in the United States, in Europe, in Canada, in Australia, throughout the world, including in Egypt, where the Muslim Brotherhood was active. And therefore, Egypt also sees the Hamas as a threat. So this is not something that is land-based or border oriented. This is something beyond. Okay, Ruth, thank you very much. And Hillel Noya, thank you very much to you as well. Thank you.